Well, staying with the countdown to the referendum, we're joined in studio by Padir Tobin, Sinn Féin TD for Mead West, who's advocating a no vote. Padir, you're very welcome this evening. Your party, Sinn Féin, is calling for a yes vote. You've decided to campaign for a no vote. What's motivating that position? Yes, it's important for me to, <clears throat> to say that, first of all, that Sinn Féin are looking for a yes vote and uh, they'll be seeking to introduce abortion in certain limited circumstances uh, if there is a yes vote. For me, this is the most important human rights debate of our generation. Uh, at the heart of this, there are two people. There there is a mother uh, who, in all cases, uh, we must ensure that her life is protected. And hundreds of obstetricians, doctors, midwives and nurses have said that in every case in this country that a mother's life is protected. But there's also an individual living human being at the heart of this particular debate. And that human being is human rights. And human rights should be universal. Uh, if you take human rights off a, a group of, of individuals, they're no longer human rights. And what the government's pr proposing is that at 12 weeks, that's at, this is the time when most people now meet their child for the first time uh, in the 12 week scan, uh, wh the time where people have photographs in their houses, the first photographs of their kids at that 12 week scan, Simon Harris is proposing that for any reason whatsoever that you'll be able to end the life of that living individual human being. Now you're mentioning human rights there. Many, including the Council of Europe and the UN Committee on Human Rights, have said that Irish women's human rights are being breached by the abortion laws in this country. Well, the European Council uh, stated that the 2013 legislation actually uh, resolved the issue because at that time uh, it stated that people in this country just didn't know how to uh, ensure that their rights of life was protected. But according to the European Council of Human Rights, we are now uh, fulfilling our responsibilities in that regard. And one of the bigger issues that I have with this particular uh, 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 a debate is um, that in, like, abortion is inequality of outcomes. So if, you know, one child lives and the other child doesn't. And we know that if you're from the margins of society, if you have a disability, uh, if you're from an ethnic background, if you're poorer or if you're female, you're far more likely to be aborted than, than other individuals. And I don't think that, you know, as a society, we are good at diversity. If you're talking about inequalities with, with those groups that you mentioned, I mean, people who are from a, a poor socioeconomic background, maybe have a disability, they don't have perhaps access to the means to travel now or to order online abortion pills, as we're seeing. So those inequalities are there. Well, I suppose, if you look at other countries, in the, in the States, 70% of abortions are concentrated on low-income families. And if you actually look at the polls, it's very interesting. In working class areas, there's now a majority vote. And I think that there's, there's an understanding now at this stage uh, that, you know, in working class areas, that we all live under the same sky. We are all responsible for each other. No matter how small we are as part of humanity, we have a responsibility to d defend and protect each other. And that's what the Eighth Amendment does. And, you know, I, I find it very hard to, to understand how... Simon Harris could go to such an extreme abortion regime from the particular uh, situation that we're at because there are very difficult cases. There's no But there's if we no look doubt. at some of those specifics, mm. okay, so how do you account, for example, a 12 year old girl who becomes pregnant through rape or incest or a woman of any age for that matter? That, it, that is a catastrophic injustice and it's important that we as a society protect and support those women in every single case through the, the healthcare system and through the, through the legal system. And I've been trying to get a rape crisis centre uh, outreach in Meath for the last four years, but the government has refused to do that. But if your life is taken off you, that's a catastrophic injustice too. And Simon Harris's answer for one catastrophic injustice is to create three or 4,000 more. But in the case of that 12-year-old girl, let's just say for argument's sake, you're saying she's already been violated once through the rape or incest, that she has to now, against her will, perhaps carry the baby through full term and go through labour. What I can't understand to a certain extent is that Simon Harris had an opportunity to design an abortion amendment uh, that could go into the constitution that would actually specifically look at those particular areas. In Germany, for example... And is it, that something you would have supported? That's, that's, I would support a referendum that would, 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 would look at that particular issue. I think you know, I would support a debate around that particular issue. But what I can support is a, an abortion regime that would allow for 97% of the abortions, over 3,000 of those abortions, every year on healthy babies and healthy mothers. But what you would support is the state forcing a woman to carry on with her pregnancy if she doesn't want to, no matter the reason. I don't want to force anybody to do anything, but I tell you, if there's a law that I can achieve in this country that saves one child's life, I will grasp that with both hands. And I think that's but what... It, that's if what, the no, referendum no, isn't passed and the Eighth Amendment is retained, women will still travel to the UK, they will still buy abortion pills online. 
But first of all, there's no law in this country that eradicates fully what it seeks to outlaw. What laws do is they significantly reduce the amount uh, of damage that's done in society. So we have one of the lowest abortion rates on, on the planet, and that's because it's illegal in this country. If we legalise it, you'll see abortion rates. Like in Scotland, for example, when, when before abortion was well, legalised, there were, there were, mean, there were just, can I just finish this point? There were 1,500 abortions. Four years after Scotland legalised abortion, there were 7,000 abortions. Now there are 12,500 abortions in Scotland. And Scotland has roughly the same population as us. That means they have an abortion rate of three and a half times the amount we have. Because when you, you legalise it, you normalise what, it. what will happen based on another country. But, but Katrina, if we, Katrina if we just, Irish people we, are, are, are not morally superior to any other people. If we, if we just look, though, at... I mean, that, that's if it's retained. If it's repealed, we have the heads of the bill here, mm. the legislation that you will be asked to vote on. Do you support that? I am completely opposed to the, the legislation that the government uh, have, have brought about. I just, I still think it's breathtaking that uh, Simon Harris saying that he wants to deal with certain really difficult cases would create three and a half thousand other difficult cases, would take the lives of three and a half thousand other healthy individuals in this country. So if it meant having to leave Sinn Féin, you would vote against this legislation? No, I've, I'm 20 years in Sinn Féin and I hope to be another 20 years in Sinn Féin because I believe that Sinn Féin is the only vehicle that can achieve my objectives with regards to United Ireland and but developing if, a if prosperous and fair economy. But if the referendum passes and you're asked to vote on this and you've just said you can't support it? Well, currently Sinn Féin policy doesn't support this particular uh, 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 piece of legislation. So. I suppose what you're asking me is a triple hypothetical question because we have to see which way the referendum goes, which way the Sinn Féin Ordesh goes, and then to see the final legislation that Simon Harris produces because, you know, uh, at this stage it's, it's hard to know uh, where Simon Harris is in this particular issue because the government's minds are changing so often on this. Okay, we're out of time. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you, Patrick Tobin, for coming into us this evening.